In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make your Ender 3 printer whisper silent using Noctua fans. So since my last video, I've gained a lot of new fans, so I wanted to make a video about them. But really, I want to make this video about making my Ender 3 more quiet, and a big part of that is going to be replacing some of the fans that came on it. So this is my Ender 3 Pro. I've already replaced the motherboard with a silent stepper motherboard. That helps cut down noise quite a bit when it's printing. But the other big source of noise is the fans. Okay, so using my FLIR camera, you can see the temperature inside of the power supply. So hot spots that are as high as 50 degrees Celsius. Top of the heat sink is about 35 degrees Celsius. The motherboard fan is making quite a bit of noise at this point. And if we look inside, so temperatures as high as 45 or 47 degrees in there. Alright, so we've got some benchmarks. My power supply fan isn't making any noise. It's not hot enough for the fan to turn on. I think it's temperature controlled. So I'm just going to have to heat it up a little bit. This is probably a really bad idea. I just needed that fan to turn on because that's one of the major fans in the system. And it turns on and off when I'm doing longer prints. So now you can hear it, it's going. Alright, so now I've got all the fans going, and I'm going to get a reading on my decibel meter. It's been about 61. So if I can make all three of these fans quieter, while maintaining the same level of cooling, then I think I'll be pretty happy with this project. So let's get started and see if we can make it work. Alright, and here are the fans that I have to work with on this project. I'm choosing Noctua fans because the last computer I built five or six years ago, I used all Noctua fans and I haven't had any problems with that machine this entire time. So they're pretty long lasting fans and I trust them to work for pretty much the entire life of this 3D printer. Alright, so when we look back at our power supply fan, it's the exact same size as this fan. So I'll just bolt this on just like this and leave it running constantly. If the power supply does get hot enough, then that internal fan can kick on and that'll be my extra layer of safety. For this heatsink cooling fan, I think this one will fit on there just nicely. If we look at the bottom here, it's just got one little fan cooling this whole thing. I could do a drop in replacement with this small fan, but if I can make this work and just put this larger fan right in there, I think that might be a better solution. If we look at this fan inside of the case, it's blowing inwards. So I'll want this fan to also blow inwards. And then I'll plug the wiring directly into the power supply. So when it comes to plugging this fan in, I already have a nice connector in the form of this extension cable. These other two wires are just for signaling, and I'm not going to be doing any signals. I'm just going to be running this fan full blast all the time. Alright, so now I'm going to get some wires to put some ring connectors onto this other side and I'll be able to plug it right into the power supply. Alright, so now both of those are crimped. So I spent all that time wiring this up only to realize that it's actually a boost converter and not a buck converter. So you can only step the voltage up from the input voltage. So I'm going to have to restart with one of my buck converters. Looks like these are a little too wide to fit in there, so I'm going to have to trim them down. All right, now that's skinny enough to fit in there. Alright, so now I want to attach this fan just like this using the screw I just took out of here. So first I just stripped out these holes by drilling them in all the way and backing them out while pressing in and it just strips all the threads out of there. And then I'm going to have to remove a little bit of material here, but then I'll be able to attach this on. I'm also going to remove this fan protector because since I'll have this fan sitting over the top of it, this protector won't be doing much. All 
and we can screw that in. All right, so that fan is now thoroughly attached. Now I can just plug this in right here. And if I did everything right, when I plug this in, that fan should just spin indefinitely. So let's hope it doesn't go up in smoke. There we go. And we're spinning away. All right. I can feel the air coming out of these holes down here, so that means we're getting good airflow. That's all good. All right, so now we can move on to the other two fans. For this next fan, I'm hoping it's as simple as just removing a few screws and being able to take this off. We got that fan out. So this is a pretty ferocious little fan. I don't want to replace it with just this small fan. I'd feel better replacing it with one of these. So what I think I'll do is I'll put this 4x10 inside of here and I'll put the 4x20 on the outside so that we'll be doubling up on the fans. That might add up to how much air this one's pushing. Alright, there's no turning back now. Hmm. Alright, so we're going to remove this fan protector too, since I'm going to put a fan on top of it. So, in other words, the fan protector will be another fan. Alright, so if I pull all these out like this, is there a way I can use those metal prongs to just stick this fan on here. You know what? This this is crazy enough that it might just work. Alright, so now I've soldered these. I've got my shrink tube on there for strain relief. I put a little E6000 glue to help secure this fan. So the motherboard fan is right here. We'll take a closer look at it now. So we've just got one 40 millimeter fan here. I'll see if I can find a way to fit this in here. I'm just going to cut out the area where I want that fan to go. Alright, that should work nicely. Now I have all my new fans on here. I've got two fans to cool off the hot end. One fan for the power supply and one fan that's going to go underneath for the motherboard. So now I just have to figure out how to plug all these in. I think I'm going to use these splitters that came with my fans, so this one down here, I'll split into two signals, oh, then I'll use an extension cord to run under the machine, and this will power my motherboard fan, but I'm actually going to use another splitter here, so these two wires run all the way through this wire harness and um, power these two fans up here because I soldered all this together. So I just have to solder these together right here and then this will power my motherboard fan. So I'll just get that soldered together. Alright, I've finished all my wiring. Now I'm just going to plug it in and see if all my fans spin. So it looks like everything's working as planned, and it's pretty quiet. Alright, so we're all back together. You'll notice there's just one thing a little funky here, and that is my motherboard fan sticks out beneath the bottom of the machine a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to print is something to fix that, and it'll be little spacers that'll make this machine a little bit taller. Alright, so time to see if all this effort was worth it, and if it makes it any quieter. We'll turn this on and see what we get. Looks like we're about 48 decibels. 
The other nice thing about this is I can actually change the fan voltage of all my fans, make them quieter or louder. So I'm going to let this run for a couple of minutes and then I'll check on the power supply temperature, the hot end heat sink, and the motherboard. And see how that compares to the stock fans. Alright, so now I've got my thermal camera out and I can look at the different components. Looking at the heat sink on the hot end, that was running about 35 degrees before. So I'm just going to try and point it at that top part of the heat sink. Looks like we're seeing 37 and a half degrees. So it is running a little bit hotter. I'm going to try and peek inside the power supply again. You can see a 40 degrees in there. 29 degrees. So this is staying a lot cooler just because the fan's on constantly. Instead of only turning on when the unit gets hot. So I think the power supply is actually going to stay cooler than it was before. So that's a solid improvement. So the last thing to check is going to be the motherboard. 52 degrees. So I think that's the heat sink for whatever's controlling the heated bed and or the hot end. Alright, so now I'm going to do my final round of testing. We can see that with this machine running, the Ender 3 Pro with all the silent upgrades that I put onto it, it's about 50 decibels. And just for the heck of it, we'll see how loud the machine is without the fans running at all. So it's about 46 decibels if I found a way to completely eliminate all of the fans. I'm going to fire this machine up and get a print going and we'll compare the noise levels. Alright, so that was the power supply fan turning on. So we're running 59 decibels now. So now I'm going to put the Ender Pro back next to it, and then I don't need this part, so I'm just going to turn this machine off and you'll see the decibel drop off. I won't talk during it so that you can hear the noise difference. And if we look back at the sound meter, we're only running about 50 decibels. That's about 10 decibels less, which is a really big sound difference. We're able to make the power supply run cooler, the motherboard run cooler, and have everything be a lot quieter. So now my fans are quiet enough, I can hear the power supply. This is a lot quieter than it was. Alright, so thanks for watching my video about how to make your Enders 3 whisper silent. If you enjoyed this video and want to see some of my other content, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel.